Hi there. In this video, we're going to explore Arturia's new innovative multi-distortion effect, Cold Fire. For more great music production content, don't forget to hit like and subscribe down below. While Arturia is likely best known for their faithful analog synthesizer emulation virtual instruments, with the release of their recent effects fragments, they've shown a dedication to creating innovative new digital audio signal process. And Cold Fire follows in the footsteps of fragments in similar fashion. So to begin, I've just got a very basic 808 clip and you can see we've got two different distortion circuits and I'm just going to explore distortion circuit A, which is currently disabled. So I'm going to enable it here. And we've got the tube with the drive cranked. So that's already sounding great. We can also do a dry wet blend for each distortion bank or for the master. And this lock allows me to leave the dry wet setting in place regardless of one of the many presets I might switch to. So we've got a profile setting here on the tube between pentode and triode. And we can also further drive the distortion circuits with the input here, which has a handy link control so that the output will compensate and be reduced as I adjust the input. But to really get a sense of the different distortion circuits, I'm gonna leave those where they are and select one of the different distortion circuits on offer. So if I select a wave folder, we've got a wide selection of models I can choose from. And already I'm just mangling the sound and giving it all kinds of incredible character. We can do something a little more subtle with the tape. And look at some of the more extreme bit crushing distortions as well. One of my favorites so far is the bit inverter which I've never quite seen. I can mute and invert individual bits. Creating really unique, super mangled digital distortion effects. Now where Cold Fire excels is with the ability to blend two distortion circuits. So not only do I get two distortion circuits, which I can enable here, but we can combine them in unique ways. I'll we'll go to the transistor. And now in the default parallel setting, we can crossfade between the two circuits. And the graphic here reflects that change. Where things get even more interesting in terms of audio processing is exploring the different routing options. So we can quickly swap the two circuits, but we can also use, for example, a stereo AB mode. So we can use this to pan and process the two stereo channels independently. There's also a mid-side mode, but what I ended up having quite a bit of fun with was the band split. And this allows us to define which range of frequencies are processed by which of the two distortion circuits we're using. We can always adjust the color, the sort of frequency focus of the resulting signal. And if we want to filter things more, we've got a pre and post filter available for both circuits, which I can access the settings of by clicking the advanced tab. And this is where a lot of Cold Fire's fun really comes into play. So I'm going to disable the uh, bit inverter. It's a little too spicy. And I will switch to the rectifier and go back to the parallel crossfade mode. And 
with the pre-filter engaged, I can say only apply rectification to frequencies with the low pass below this frequency, so 855, and then only output the rectified material above 474. So we can really focus on a particular range of input and output. But, you know, it might be more interesting to instead distort the highs and then kind of remove some of the harshness with the low pass filter on the output. The most fun I had so far was using the different comb filters which even without much rectification or let's switch to perhaps the force I can harness the comb filters to sort of add a lot of character to the signal before it even reaches the distortion bank. Now while I've been doing this you might have noticed six of Arturia's lovely modulators available for easy assignment down below. So I'm going to click assign on this LFO and then apply that to the comb filter frequency. And I can adjust some of the settings here, make it a longer rate, in this case synced at four bars. And any one of these modulators can be set to an LFO, a function generator, an envelope follower, or a sequencer. So just by way of contrast, here's a very simple bass line that's basically just a sine wave. And I will slowly blend cold fire into the mix so we can appreciate the rich harmonic intensity it's able to add. So the color really can affect the brightness. It's a little more audible with something harmonic. So let's try just adding a little more tonality here. And maybe I'll try a parallel split with, let's try this diode on the wave shaper. And I'll engage the pre-filter just to give it a bit of a peek. And now I can, of course, assign the LFO, for example. Adjust the waveform shape. And perhaps a dotted sync might be a little more appropriate. Finally, we've got a feedback circuit which, so far as I can tell, works better on certain circuits than others with a simple feedback level, synced or unsynced time, and a color or notch filter. We've also got a limiter that we can activate here. to really get things pumping, but we can also set it to a compressor or a multiband with presets, time, tone, and the compressor, of course, your standard threshold, ratio, and a sort of unified attack release time control. So this has been a quick look at Cold Fire. Of course, it comes with an incredible collection of presets, which we can navigate here. I've never really encountered a distortion effect this full featured. It seems to be an incredible sound design tool. I do find it can be somewhat processor intensive. So 
that's something to keep in mind, but you can always freeze, flatten, or otherwise print to audio in your DAW. So while there are plenty of distortion plugins on the market, I've yet to encounter one that can really do it all, like Cold Fire. For more great music production content, don't forget to hit like and subscribe down below.